the primary care doctor is more than just someone who can read a chart and know what's on it and then take it one step further to figure out how to treat you. Continuous Hi. compressions, All right? You have the honor and the privilege of being someone's confidant in their lowest points to be with them when they need someone to pray with. And then you might want to continue laying off compressions and just continue with continuous airway. I will never understand how someone could be so generous as to grant me that ability and to educate me enough so that I could go out there and actually play this role in society. Good job, guys. Good, good, good. My name is Jasper Kerala. I am a medical education fellow at the Crooksville College of Osteopathic Medicine here in Northeast Missouri, and I am lucky enough to be a National Health Service course scholar. My family is of Palestinian descent, and I actually grew up on the south side of Chicago. Growing up, we didn't have a lot of material things. We had each other. Whatever my mom could afford to give me, I was very appreciative of. My dad passed away when I was 16, and my dad and uncle didn't have a primary care physician. There was just no middleman to really keep control over what was being done to them as far as medications, procedures, whatnot. So I started translating for them when I was around 10, and knowing what it was that they were undergoing as patients and being in the health setting for so long made me develop this really deep appreciation for medicine and what physicians have to kind of undergo. I was playing the role that I felt they needed to be played in their lives. My experiences pushed me going into primary care, my biggest issue was, uh, one, getting in, and, and two, was actually affording it. I heard about the National Health Service Corps when I was a freshman in college. I knew the odds of getting it were very slim, but then to get a phone call, someone saying, listen, you go to school, become a doctor, we'll take care of the money. Then I called my mom, and I couldn't even get the words out of my mouth. And I think I just said something like, it's taken care of. And she's like, what, who, who, who are you talking about? And I'm like, no, no, school, like, it's paid for. And she just starts crying, and we all just join in a group cry for a good two minutes. I've calculated how much it is because when someone hands you a scholarship, you don't just say, thank you for this award. And that was $678,000. That was just strictly the loans that you're taking out for your tuition and interest that builds up on it. I have made a promise to my mom. The day I get to become a physician, that's the day she will retire. The reason that I kind of chose going to an osteopathic medical school was that it has a whole person health approach. So you really kind of look at, at a person as holistically as possible. And that's where I feel like osteopathy sort of differs a little bit from the traditional medicine. And I just grew to really appreciate how many opportunities I have that are provided to me to kind of step out and actually begin my service towards primary care and the underserved. Wherever the core takes me is where I'm ready to serve. And how long will this happen? To even Think of the opportunities that I will have ahead of me, and then have someone saying, not only do we believe that you're gonna be a doctor, but we will financially support your endeavors in becoming a physician, and make it so that you will become the best physician that you possibly can become, is just unfathomable.